I've been super fortunate enough to get hold of the brand new Eufy Cam 3 system, which features the third generation base station and new S330 cameras for review. And I've got to say that these are perhaps some of the most advanced wireless home security cameras that I've tested so far, and quite possibly the best. Now I've had a long running love-hate relationship with home security cameras where particular brands excel for sure, they often fail miserably at other functions. And my guess is you guys with wireless security cameras know exactly what I'm talking about. In fact, let me know in the comments which system you use, if, if any at all. And if you want to rant, tell us the worst annoyance that it has. But anyway, I've tested so many different options and I've not found one that's ticked all the boxes for me. And that is, until now, from a technology standpoint, the new S330 cameras feature a 13,400 mAh battery, 4K quality footage, night vision, both standard and full color with the spotlight, and perhaps the cream on top of the cake, an inbuilt solar panel on the top to give them infinite power. These are perhaps the most powerful and comprehensive cameras I've tested so far. And so is the new base station, the Home Base 3. This thing is packed with power too, featuring 16 gig of local storage and the ability to install up to 16 terabytes of extended internal storage. Not only this, it features a new AI brain for the Eufy system that they're calling Bionic Mind. This can supposedly accurately detect pets, cars, people, and even faces that it recognizes. So let's dive in and take a look at the new system to see if it lives up to its incredible stats on paper. The footage that it takes is excellent quality and being 4K, it means that you have a good amount of room to zoom in on individual parts of the footage and retain a decent level of clarity and detail. Although it doesn't look like it from the shape of the camera, the image is also surprisingly wide. Now these cameras are mostly motion triggered, although it's heavily powered by AI, which I'll talk more about in a bit. But when it detects movement or a parameter that you've set in the app, it will start recording a clip until it detects no further movement from that incident. Now the system will send a push notification to your phone from this incident, which by the way, if you're an Apple user, you can change the sound of this notification. So it differs from the stock iOS notification sound, which is a function that almost no other wireless security camera manufacturers seem to let you do. And one of my biggest gripes with other systems, being able to change the tone means I don't have to keep looking at my phone every time I get a notification for fear it's gonna be an undesirable going through my panty drawer. I did it. I've got his pants. <laughs> Instead, I know that I only need to spring to action and urgently check my phone when the specific notification sound that I've chosen goes off. But anyway, you can then tap that notification to see a live view or alternatively revisit the event as Yuffie have called it at a later point. Now reviewing this footage, both live and past events, has perhaps been the most stable and speedy experience that I've had to date. And it seems to connect real quick. And that could be in part down to how it records the footage. Much of the other systems I've tried predominantly use cloud storage. So when you're reviewing your footage, it pulls it from the cloud. Whereas with the Eufy Base Station 3, as I mentioned, it has the ability to install an internal hard drive for local storage. Now this supports both standard drives and solid state drives. And naturally I thought I would try SSD because they have a faster read and write speed, which in theory could help with the speed of reviewing the recorded footage remotely. But I'm putting my hand up here and saying that I haven't yet tried it with a standard drive. So I'm not sure how the speed of the read and write will be impacted by using a slower disk. But when you can get something like a 250 gig SSD for about 22 pounds 50, why would you go for anything else? Especially if the theory is gonna be quicker. I'll link below to the one that I'm using personally, especially if you're thinking about using an SSD, but there is an also further option of cloud storage, which costs around $10 per month for unlimited cameras or $3 for one camera. This is in line with other services, although potentially, actually, it could be better than some. 
because they often come with a limit of around five cameras, but the Eufy system has unlimited cloud storage. But really, the fact that Eufy lets me use a full-blown hard drive means that I'm far less likely to use cloud storage, and this, in turn, saves me money on a costly subscription fee. Although, although cloud storage does have the benefit of meaning that your footage is recorded and safe in the event of a calamity like an undesirable coming in and robbing your blind but also thieving the base station. And I guess it also means that if your home internet is down and you are going to be able to access the footage remotely from the cloud storage rather than having to rely just on your home storage. So there are obviously some amazing benefits of having local storage and a few things to consider about potentially using the cloud storage. There is one slight further irritant when it comes to storage. In previous generations of Eufy cameras and base stations, they've worked with HomeKit, which meant that essentially you could use your iCloud subscription plan to store any recorded events, which negates the need to subscribe to cloud storage from Eufy. But with the base station 3 at the moment, it doesn't appear to be HomeKit compatible. Now, whether or not they change this in future, I'm not sure. Watch this space. But it does mean that if you wanted cloud storage, you're going to have to subscribe to the Eufy packages for this. Actually, that's one thing I would like from other security cameras and Eufy, is the ability to use other cloud storage backup options. If I could sign into my Dropbox directly on the base station so that it automatically backs up, that'd be amazing. I wonder if there's a way to do that. Hmm. Talking about smart home integration, it does currently support Amazon Alexa and pairs up through the app pretty straightforward enough. And this allows remote viewing, remote arming, remote disarming, uh, voice commands and routine integration, which is positive. And I'm hoping in future there will be further integration of routines which could be triggered by the AI detection that this system has, but that is on Amazon. Because when it comes to actually detecting the undesirables, the AI is nothing short of, well, scary, actually. It's perhaps only one step away of becoming self-aware, realising that humans are in fact the enemy and launching a full-scale nuclear assault on the planet before entering a mind-boggling time travel kiss chase with some humans who think they can stop the inevitable from happening. That'd make a good film, wouldn't it? It's so advanced that it can even recognise the back of my head, which apart from the increasingly large bald patch, I didn't really think it was that distinguishable. It's in this respect that I think it's a little scary. But putting the scary eventual robot overlords to one side, it's actually a super handy feature. And it means that I can go into the app to quickly identify faces and unfamiliar faces and see where the cameras have detected perhaps the same person more than once. And it's a really handy way of accessing clips on one person throughout all of your cameras to find out their entire journey. Now, it's not just human faces that it can detect either. It can detect vehicles, as I said, and even pets, although it does have one slight quirk. And it tends to think that any animal is a pet, like this horse. <laughs> and although we have many horses trotting here through the country club, we don't have one yet as a pet, so it's not right all of the time, but it does seem to get it right a hell of a lot. And the fact that it tells you what it's detected and it zooms in on the subject for the preview of the notification, it makes it a really powerful tool for a quick glance. And here's another by the way moment. These rich notifications where it shows you what it's detected are super important for a really quick snapshot. And surprisingly, not every manufacturer actually lets you do this, which is bizarre. In fact, Eufy is so good, and these are so customizable, Eufy actually lets you choose exactly how this notification is received, even down to the ability to receive a text-based notification first, and then an image preview after, which gives you better reliability and more instant notifications of events at home when you're out exploring the world and have very little phone signal. And this customization, along with the ability to change the notification tone, makes the Eufy cameras possibly some of the most customizable when it comes to alerting. 
The only thing I could think of that would further increase the customizability would be is if you could set a different notification sound per event. So if it detects a face that it recognizes, it could send a happy tone. Or if it detects an unknown face, it sends more of an urgent tone, which would help with the frequency of having to check the events on my phone. And instead, making that audio cue from your pocket even more useful. And there's no reason they couldn't because you can already set the tone per camera. I just can't imagine it would take much more to do that per event or per face as well. Actually, that's another point. All notification tones that it lets you pick within the app are a bit cheery, not really urgent enough. It would be great if they could make some more urgent tones for when the AI does detect an undesirable creeping through the house, rather than a twinkly tone, because it doesn't really set the right mode or sense of urgency. What I personally would do here is have all the cameras say on the perimeter have a more standard tone with increasing urgency of the tone for cameras within the house. So I kind of get a tiered approach. And again, I'm able to understand exactly what's going on just from the sound coming out of my phone. Now, this AI detection is completely run on device and built into the new third generation hub. So this combined with the internal SSD footage makes it one of the most powerful hubs on the market for sure. But with all of these features on board and the SSD as well, it does make it quicker and more secure. But on the other hand, it does mean that it has an internal fan, which does spin up occasionally. This means you might not want to keep it the hub in a spot where you enjoy peace and quiet like your bedroom for fear the fan might wake you up at night, which it would do with me because I wake up if a feather drops in the next village over. It also means that it would be ill-advised to keep it in an enclosed cabinet because this sort of thing can increase the temperature of the unit, meaning that the best place for this is out on the side, which means it can vent properly, but it might also mean that it restricts some people with placement. But it is quite an inoffensive product in terms of appearance, so I can't imagine it causing too much hassle. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the real cherry on top of the cake for me, though, has been the integrated solar panels on the cameras. These are utterly incredible and have performed way better than I expected. I took a screenshot of 10 days of use, which you can see when you go to the camera's power settings. And over these 10 days, this particular camera recorded 972 individual motion events and actually filmed 489. Now, that seems like a lot, averaging around 97 motion events a day, but I purposely faced it towards an area that got lots of traffic to understand how that would impact usage over a long term from a battery life perspective. And here's the thing that kind of surprised me the most. The battery was still 100% after all that. That is crazy. Even in Wales, where the weather is mostly grey, it managed to draw enough solar charge to keep it at 100%. And this is despite having recorded that many events and in optimal surveillance mode as well, which prioritises longer clips over shorter snapshots. It's just incredible. And you can see that over the last six of those 10 days, the solar panel was able to charge the battery up by varying amounts, ranging from 225 mAh on the best day to just 42 mAh on a particularly gray day. But this incredibly robust solar charging system means the cameras can go up and I never have to worry about them ever again. There is a small chance that I might need to charge them during the winter, especially if the cameras aren't in optimal location for sunlight. But with an internal 13,400 mAh battery, which might I add is over double the capacity of many cameras from competitors within this price range, I can't see me needing to charge it up more than once. And if the past few weeks are anything to go by, I truly think these solar panels are going to give me unlimited power even in winter and even in Wales, and I would be very, very surprised if I have to charge them up. Now, I recognise there are other options out there for solar panels to charge cameras, but these are often just increase the level of bulk on the side of your house, and it also makes the cameras even more noticeable. Whereas with the Eufy cameras, it makes them a single unit being sleeker and less obtrusive, and you don't have to have cables trailing everywhere. 
There is a slight downside to this design that you have to position the cameras where they're going to get sunlight, which might not be suitable in some situations. But the good news is these can still work with remote panels too. So if you want to double that solar charging element up, you can do. Diving a little deeper into this, along with the benefit of never having to charge them ever again, they also have the added benefit of saving me money on my ever-increasing electricity bill. Not a lot, but every little penny helps right now. And if you have four of these dotted around the house and you relied on charging them every time you ran out, then it soon adds up. And talking about the cost, this particular system comes out of 499 which is for the two cameras and the base station. Now, this might seem like quite a bit, but it runs at a very similar price to some of the higher-end competitors. But actually, this could do a hell of a lot more than pretty much every single one of them put together. So that makes it unbelievable value for that price. And a further consideration is the storage system is extremely bust and the AI is all on board that base station, which is often hid behind paywalls with competitors. Now, given the average subscription of this type of service is around eight pounds per month for just a few cameras, this means that you're saving around 100 pounds every single year on subscription costs, which in turn means that these actually pay for themselves when compared to competitors in just a few years. And not only will it save you money through being, being completely free and no subscription cards, it will save you money on never having to charge them. So you're literally getting free electricity and they pay for themselves. They are super cost effective in the long run. Now, I know I've seemingly gushed about these cameras throughout this entire episode. And the truth is, I have, and that's because I absolutely love them, and they've scratched every irritation I've had with other camera systems, and I've genuinely struggled to find something that I don't like about the Eufy Cam 3. It's so hard that I've found myself rambling about the notification sounds being too twinkly, and an attempt to find balance to my opinion. But there really can't be any balance with these, not when the product is this good, this accurate and this well thought out and this reliable i've been utterly blown away with them and if you're thinking about a wireless security setup or you run another system from another manufacturer that you find has certain irritating aspects like i don't know a monthly subscription cost or lack of ai or lack of rich notifications or lack of functionality head to the link below and buy these now i don't say it often but i mean it Buy them, buy them now, and when you do, and you end up loving them just as much as I have, come back here and thank me in the comments, because you absolutely will. And that concludes today's episode. I've only really just scratched the surface on what these things can actually do, because they are truly incredible, and there's loads of other stuff like anti-theft mechanisms and alarms and all sorts of stuff you can do but that will take another entire episode to go through those just know that i have been so impressed with them but if you enjoyed today's episode and you found it of any help in deciding whether or not the eufy cam 3 system is for you then i'd really appreciate the favor returned and hitting that like and that subscribe if you want to see more episodes but other than that guys i will see you back for another episode of Stu's reviews soon